We want to find the moment around this triangle when we apply a force of 30 newtons on the hypotenuse. So what is the force that makes it our what's the moment that makes it want to rotate in this direction? So how do we actually find that? Well, there are multiple ways of finding it, but with this one we have a unique problem because we are not told the actual the actual point where it's being applied. We don't know how high it is. We don't know the height and we don't know the distance that way. We don't know where it's being applied. All we know is it's applied on the hypotenuse. So if we assume that this is a rigid body, then we can use the the principle of transmissibility. And remember the principle of transmissibility means that a vector can be moved, a force vector can moved, be moved anywhere on its line of action and its line of action happens to be on the hypotenuse. So we could actually move this 30 newtons up here or down here. So we will first move it to the top. So we'll move the 30 newtons up here. Get a little bit of a different color. So apply the 30 newtons there. Now at this point, the force in the y direction of this component so remember we can break forces down into their x components so a force is equal to its x component plus its y component and here at this point up here its y component is going straight down at e straight down at e that means it has no effect on the rotation so the only thing that's actually affecting the rotation is the f x component so the force in the x direction or the component, the, <laughs> the component of the force in the x direction. Now that doesn't mean that this, that the force in the y direction has no bearings, because down here, if we did it down here, the force in the x direction has no bearings, but the force in the y direction has a major effect. So, and I and these and they will actually give the same momentum, and I'll show that throughout the video. But first, we need to find out what the force in the x direction is and what the force in the y direction is. We're not told what this angle is, but we know that this has the same angle. So this has the same angle as that, and this has the same angle as this. Knowing that, we can treat these as a just treat as a much smaller triangle. So if we can find the the length of the hypotenuse of this triangle so the hypotenuse of this triangle, we can get Fy and Fx. So we will first get F, we will we'll first get the hypotenuse. And if we remember that the hypotenuse is equal to a squared plus b squared equals h squared, and a squared, we'll say that this is a and this is b, a squared is 16 meters squared plus 4 meters squared equals um, h squared, so that is 20 meters squared. And if we take the square root of this, that will give us h, so then that is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 5 meters, which is equal to 2 square root 5 meters. So now we know what h is. h is equal to 2 square root 5 meters. So if we divide the 30 newtons by 2 square root 5 meters and multiply it by the length that we're interested in, so we want to find uh, fx, so we'll multiply it by 2 meters, so that's meters, times 2 meters. This meter and this meter will cancel out. This 2 and this 2 will cancel out, so we get 30 newtons over square root 5 and throw that in a calculator so 30 divided by f square root of 5 is equal to 13.4 newtons 13.4 newtons so now this is equal to the force in the x direction now let's find the force in the y direction so it's 30 newtons over 2 square root 5 meters 
times four meters, four meters, and that is equal to, so this meter will cancel out with that, that two, we'll break that down into a two, so then we get 60 newtons over square root five, or simply twice as much as that, so that should be, oh, 20, 26.8 newtons. So now we know what the force in the y direction and the force in the x direction are. So here, if we multiply 4 meters, 4 meters times the force in the x direction at this point, it will give us how much this body wants to rotate that way. So it's basically a simple seesaw. So 4 meters times times 13.4 newtons will give us, uh, I could do the math, but will give us 4 times 13.4 is equal to 56.6 newtons, or 53.6 newtons, I think it was. 53.6 newtons. So that is the Newton meters. That's the important thing. So that is equal to the moment. Because remember, the f the moment, that's a capital M, the moment is equal to the force times the distance. And that is the distance. So now, let's do it at this distance, but with the y component of the force. And we should get the same number. So this distance is 2 meters, but the force in the y direction is 26.8 26.8 newtons and that is equal to it should be 53.6 but let's just make sure 26.8 times 2 is equal to 53.6 newtons 53.6 newton meters and that is again is equal to the moment so you can you can actually find the moment without using any angles or without give, be, without being given whoops so remember we weren't given where this 30 newtons was being applied we were only told that it was on the hypotenuse we weren't told the exact area and we use the principle of transmissibility which just means that a vector can be moved anywhere along its line of action the line of action was along the hypotenuse, and we could move it up here, where this point, the only part of the force that would have a bearing on it would be the force in the x direction, or we could move it down here, where the force that would only have an effect on it would be in the y direction. And we see that they are the equivalent. So, in theory, if we were given something like this, and you apply the force right here, <coughs> you could pretend to apply the force up here or down here. Of course, you would have to know what this length is and what you would have to know what this length is and this length. So, But overall, you could treat it as if you move the force up there and the force down here. So anytime you're given a force, you can treat it as if it has a triangle. So it was like this. And I'll do an example of something like that in the next video.